So it's, you know, it's like those little tweaks that you have to mention that kind of get people to understand the biology and the chemistry of the human body and also the psychological mindset they're in that they're being basically taught to be in. Uh, I have other people who are like, oh, well, I heard keto is great for burning fat. And I said, well, why? Well, you know, my friend went on the um, ketosis or went to keto um, and went on the keto diet and they lost weight. I said, okay, well, damn it. Before I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> Sorry guys, I was trying to shoot this before and the camera <laughs> now just fell off. So I'm gonna try to reshoot this whole video. Uh, hopefully I'll remember what I was saying in the first part of it. Uh, I was talking about a question I received in order to answer certain people uh, who are looking for kind of like that quick fix or the quick answer to prevent them making a lot of the same mistakes I probably made when I was around you know, 17, 18, 25. And granted, I'm still fixing a lot of mistakes and still always learning, but I think the major issue that you're going to come across with people like that uh, is how receptive they are to actually learning. Because if they're not, you're always going to have those people like, what supplement can I take? What diet can I do? How fast do I need to cut calories? How much cardio? Like, they're just looking for that um, immediate answer. And no matter what you say, they're just going to do the exact opposite in six months, year, year and a half, two years later. They're still going to complain about the results they didn't get uh, from the advice that they took but never bothered to listen to. So, when I get questions like this or I have to field questions like this, which I do a lot of about you know carbohydrates, keto, veganism, intermittent fasting, BCA, supplementation, all that kind of stuff, um, I try to answer their question with a question and or try to get them to see the psychology of why they're heading down the path that they're heading down and then I'm even realizing they're doing it. I'll give you an example. I get a lot of questions lately about carbohydrates or why do I have carbohydrates so high for someone uh, because people say, well, I'm carb sensitive. And I say, well, I say, well, really, are you carb sensitive? Do you have a gluten sensitivity? Have you ever been diagnosed with that? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay, so is it that you're carb sensitive or for some reason are you afraid of carbohydrates because you're afraid it's going to make you fat? And immediately I'll see the wheels like click or like the one they go, well, carbohydrates make you fat. And I said, well, what gives you the impression that carbohydrates make you fat? Um, and then they'll start telling me about some magazine they read um, or their friend who went on some sort of stupid cleanse. Sorry, it is stupid. Um, you have a liver and you have kidneys. You don't need to go on a cleanse. This toxin stuff with these packages is ridiculous. But side note. So I'll kind of get them to go down the path of admitting that they're afraid to eat carbohydrates or they're afraid to eat fat based on some sort of myth or incorrect information they've heard from somewhere. Whether it's television, a magazine, their friend, whatever the case may be. And when I do that, it tends to make people a little bit more aware and then I can kind of very quickly like plug in some information. So I'll start to ask people like what they're doing and why they're doing it and ask them how the results are working. And usually they'll tell me what they're doing and they'll say they're getting no results and they're getting frustrated. And I say, okay, great. Well, this is the reason why I do this. Or this is the reason why I do that. And this is why I see better dietary adherence. I see more fat loss um, and, and, and of such nature. So I'll explain to them why being in a severe caloric deficit for an extended period of time really isn't gonna do anything for them. Um, it'll result in bad dietary adherence, frustration, them binge eating eventually, the yo-yoing all over the place, and in the end, ending up with worse body composition later on than when they started. So when I can do that, sometimes it helps to at least open the person up to understand that the physiological thing they're afraid of is not really physiological, it's psychological. So another example I'll give you is, as of late, keto is coming back with a vengeance as this ma magical fat burning Sure, it's not, okay? Ketosis is simply a lack of a macronutrient, which is to, to get rid of carbohydrate, as I have as little carbohydrate as possible, and substitute your intake with things with like a, a moderate protein intake and a higher fat intake. 
So people buy a soup by by changing the energy pathway from carbohydrate to fat. People think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm eating fat, therefore I'm burning fat, therefore my body's burning fat. And I'm like, no. What you did was you created a caloric deficit with a change of macronutrient, and therefore you're dropping body fat. Now, do I have anything against people on a keto diet? No. There are some medically uh, medical conditions in which they do see benefit for people going on the, on the um, keto diet. So epilepsy, people suffer from seizures, um, slowing down certain types of cancers where then if you also get this, the, the primary treatment of things like chemotherapy, it can aid in killing off cancer. So in those instances it might be great or some, some person might just have more of a biological ability or adaptability that keto works really well for them. But it's not a one-all, fits-all, magical solution for fat loss. You can lose fat and still eat carbohydrate. The biggest issue I see is that people go from one extreme to the next. They just There's too many black and white absolutes and there's a lot more gray area in between. And there's a lot of way to, uh, ways to skin a cat to get that answer. Um, people ask me about training protocol about, well, you know, should I train this way or that way? And I'm like, well, mainly it's about following a well-structured plan and executing it over a period of time and seeing what your body responds to. So I know I respond very well to a mixture of hitting my body parts more than once a week, anywhere from two to three times a week, depending on the body part. And I blend in anything from five reps upwards of 20 to 30 reps, depending on what I'm doing and depending on how my body feels. I'll blend in different training types or rep ranges because that way I can tap into the type one and type two muscle fibers um, and make sure that they're both getting used in order to maximize hypertrophy. Now, am I an expert in this? No, in fact, I constantly read up on this on different ways to continue to maximize hypertrophy. Um, I'm reading something from Brad Schoenfeld right now. I read articles all the time and I do a lot of trial and error to figure out what works well specifically for me. And then I try a lot of trial and error on my clients that I train to see what is triggering the result in them. Um, what helps them stick to the training protocol, what keeps them motivated, and also maximizes the muscle growth and or fat loss. Um, so it's constantly trying to just get people to open their eyes, listen a little bit, just give them enough information to like wet their palate so that they're receptive to it without getting too scientific or too over the top where that you feel like they're, they feel like you're talking down to them and preaching to them because that can get them excited to learn and then you have somebody that you can convert over time. Um, on the other extreme, there are some people that just like to bitch. Um, they're always gonna complain, they're never going to listen and there's nothing you can do to help them and eventually you'll just have to come to the point and say, listen, I've given you a lot of advice, you're not listening, so what would you like me to do? You're, you're not receptive, you're not executing this properly, so don't waste my time and get those people away from you because they're just gonna be a leech constantly nagging and annoying and driving you crazy. And in the end, they're still gonna do what they wanna do and then complain how they didn't get results and they'll be like, oh well, it's genetics. Oh well, it's my thyroid. Oh well, uh, it's some other, you know, I'm just tired. Oh well, it's my life. Oh well, I have to work. Don't waste your time on those people. But do your best in a very simplistic manner, in a sly way, to get people to admit to you what the psychological issue is because if you can, you make them aware of it and then you can kind of start to educate and change their perception as to everything they've been doing. That's the best advice I can give. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you got something from this, great. If you didn't, oh well. Don't forget to like, give me a thumbs up as much as possible and subscribe. I am trying to build the channel. I am trying to relay great information as much as I can. Hope you're enjoying everything. Talk to you guys soon.